Overnight, the price of gold hit a new all-time record high. We traded just above $2,135 an ounce. Now, I'm recording this video on Monday afternoon, and gold has already dropped by better than $100 an ounce below that record high. In fact, earlier today, I think we traded below 2020 so about $115 per ounce drop from last night's high. Now, a lot of people are taking this to mean that that's it. This is some kind of blow off top. This is the end of the gold bull market. I think this is just the beginning. I think the fact that we made a new all-time high, the fact that gold traded above 2100 for the first time is indicative of a new bull market. Not an old bull market that's dying, but a new one that's just been born. In fact, we've spent the last several months building tremendous support for the price of gold, even in the face of relentless uh, Fed rate hikes and, and tough talk about doing whatever it takes to uh, combat inflation. Gold has held pretty firm despite what the markets perceive as very strong headwinds with a strengthening dollar and rising yields uh, that are normally perceived as a big negative for gold, gold has held up very well. And we haven't seen much in the way of a decline. We have had a lot of resistance around the 2000 level, but we've had a lot of support below 1900. And gold wasn't really able to be sold off very much because of the overwhelming demand coming from investors. Now, last night, I believe that some short-term speculators who had bought gold took advantage of the gap up. The catalyst was heightened geopolitical tensions in the Middle East, and I'm sure more of that's going to come. But I think traders who are very short-term focused wanted to put those profits in their pocket because obviously anybody who had bought gold was looking at some good profits, especially if they were levered up last night. So they took profits and I'm sure there were some shorts who were tempted to try to pick the top in the market and so they probably sold. But I think right now we're seeing the lows. I think the support is 2000. Does that mean there's some kind of line in the sand where gold can't go below 2000? No but I think there'll be tremendous buying any opportunity to buy it below 2000 because the way markets typically work, what was resistance becomes support when that resistance is taken out. And given the fact that it took gold a long time to really take out this resistance, I think that we've cleared a pathway uh, and there are tremendous gains coming. Remember, we're not that much higher than we were when gold set a record high in 2011. And we barely took out the high that gold set in 2020. But there's been all this resistance since 2011, and I think we've now taken it out. I think the buying has exhausted the selling, and we have significant upside from here. You know, people have said to me, is it too late to buy gold because gold is now at a 80 high? It's not too late, it's still early. And remember, the record high doesn't account for inflation. It doesn't even count for the government's version of inflation, the, the CPI, which probably only captures half of the impact of inflation. Uh, so in that respect, gold remains cheap. It certainly remains cheap relative to other assets. Look at the stock market. Look where the price of gold is at roughly 2000 where you have a 36000 a uh, Dow, uh, you remember back in 1980, at the end of the 1970s bull market, where gold started at $35 an ounce and went over 800, by the early 1980s, gold and the Dow were at the same number, about 800. Now in 1966, when gold was uh, $35 an ounce, the Dow was 1,000. So think about the enormity of that decline in real terms. The Dow Jones dropped far more in gold terms than it did in dollar terms. And people who had the foresight 
to load up on gold in the late 1960s, early 1970s, because they understood the consequences of the huge deficits and the inflation that was being created in the 1960s and early 1970s, they made a tremendous amount of money. The people who didn't recognize that, who were stuck in the mindset of the nifty 50 stock market in the go-go 60s, they got destroyed during the 1970s. So I think we're set up similar to the way we were in 1970, only the United States is in much worse shape now than it was then. Back in 1970, we were still the world's biggest creditor nation. We still ran large trade surpluses. Now, we're not only the world's biggest debtor nation, but we owe more money than all the other debtor nations of the world combined. And we have record trade deficits, not to mention record budget deficits and a record national debt. We are careening towards a fiscal crisis unlike we have never experienced. And I think Powell is going to run up the printing presses uh, like we haven't seen before, even more uh, than Ben Bernanke in the original QE days in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis. You know, Wall Street is already pricing in rate cuts as early as Q1, Q2 of next year. So the hikes are over as far as Wall Street is concerned. And now the Fed is going to cut. Well, if gold couldn't go much below 2000 when the Fed was hiking rates, imagine where it can go now that it stopped hiking and is about to cut, especially when the markets come to terms with the reality that inflation is not dead, that inflation never came near the Fed's 2% target. But where we are now, maybe 3 4%, that's as close as the Fed's going to get. Because I think we're getting close to a major dollar sell-off. The dollar rallied a bit today, and that might be one of the reasons that we got the, the sharp reversal in the price of gold. But I think the dollar's days are numbered here because I think the world is figuring it out that we're in this box. And though the Fed uh, can bark about fighting inflation, it really can't bite because it doesn't have any teeth. Because if it really does what it takes... Uh, to put that inflation genie back in the bottle, it will create uh, the mother of all financial crises that will make 2008 look like a Sunday school picnic. And it will also force the U.S. government into insolvency. It will have to default on its national debt. It will have to default on all sorts of commitments it's made to voters for Social Security, Medicare, pensions. I don't believe for a second that that's going to happen. The Fed is far too political to allow that to happen. I think they're going to respond to this coming fiscal crisis the same way they responded to the financial crisis uh, and the, the dot-com blow up and every crisis since Greenspan by printing money, creating inflation, and then the bottom's going to drop out of the dollar, inflation is going through the roof, and gold is going to be leading the way. So now is really the time, now that we've taken out this resistance, if you haven't already bought your gold, uh, buy some. Uh, if you have gold, but you can buy more. If you don't feel like you have a, a strong enough position, you can add to it. Silver, by the way, is an even better buy. It's still around $25. It's still half of its 52-week high. In fact, silver, not I mean record high. And in fact, silver traded at $50 an ounce back in 1980 when the Hunt brothers were trying to corner the market. So think about what's happened in the last 24 years, or no, 44 years. What am I talking about? Uh, and the price of silver is the same. I mean, how many things could you buy today at the same price as uh, 40, 44 years ago? I mean, granted, that was a huge uh, overvaluation at that point, but still, it, it puts it in perspective. So if you don't have any silver, this is definitely the time to buy that. Now, you know, if you're holding any fool's gold, I'm not sure how many people uh, in my audience are still holding on to Bitcoin, but Bitcoin stole a lot of gold's thunder today because Bitcoin rose not only above 40,000, but above 42,000. In fact, all the financial headlines were focused on what's happening in Bitcoin. Uh, you know, very few were even paying attention to what happened in gold. In fact, a lot of these stations now, they just talk about Bitcoin. It's digital gold. They just assume that it's the new gold. So who needs the real thing? Well, it's not digital gold. 
it's digital fool's gold. The reason that gold, that Bitcoin and other cryptos, because they're all going up, right? They all can't be digital gold, but I mean, cryptos are going up all over the place. It is rampant speculation based on the eminent uh, prospects of several Bitcoin ETFs that are going to be traded in the United States. And you have the whole community speculating that as soon as investors have a chance to buy Bitcoin in a spot ETF, they're going to buy it. And it's going to create all this demand, which is going to send prices higher. I don't believe that that demand is there. I think the vast majority of people who want to buy Bitcoin own it. They had no problem buying it. They could have bought it directly. They could have bought ETFs on Bitcoin futures. They could have bought all sorts of stocks that are basically proxies on Bitcoin. They have Bitcoin spot ETFs that trade in foreign markets. Uh, so people could have accessed those. So I don't believe there's this huge pent up demand that's been sitting on the sideline for years waiting for a spot ETF. I think the people waiting for the spot ETF are the sellers, particularly the whales who maybe view this as an opportunity uh, to unload a bunch of Bitcoin on the bag holders who buy the ETFs. But I don't think it's going to work out. It's going to be a buy the rumor, sell the fact. And in fact, it may be a buy the rumor and sell the rumor. The rally may not even last until the fact. I don't think it's going to be that easy for all these speculators who piled into Bitcoin to get out. But if you have some Bitcoin, sell it. You know, at Shift Gold, we do make it easy for you. We use a company called BitPay, and that doesn't mean we accept Bitcoin. No, we just make it easy for you on our website to sell your Bitcoin to get the dollars that you need to buy gold in one simple transaction. So you can cash out your fool's gold uh, and buy the real thing. Uh, and by the way, I want to make an announcement today. If you haven't heard, I now own Shift Gold again, or my family trust does. Seven years ago, I sold the company in its entirety to gold money. And I was very excited at that time about being involved in, in their attempt to return gold to its rightful status as money. But unfortunately, the regulators didn't allow us to do that. Uh, the cost of doing uh, the original vision of the company uh, was, was uh, too much uh, for the company to bear. And so it rendered the whole business model at non-viable at the current market. And so the company had to kind of change gears and it still is a way to hold gold. Uh, you just can't use it in, in, as a medium of exchange. Uh, and they're doing some other things. And so it made sense for us to part ways. Maybe we'll work together in the future uh, on some uh, joint ventures that might make sense uh, for both firms. But for now, I own the company once again. So instead of just being the founder, uh, I'm the owner once again of, of Shift Gold. And so whenever you're buying from Shift Gold, now you're, you're, working, you're working with me uh, or my technically, I guess it's the Shift Family Trust uh, that is the owner of the company. Uh, so uh, take advantage of this pullback, this $100 pullback from last night's high. If you thought, oh my God, the train's leaving the station, I'm not on board. Well, we pulled back up to the station briefly. You got a time to board. Uh, so don't look to gift horse in the rat mouth. Uh, you know, shiftgold.com is the place to go. The 800 number is there on the website. You can call up, you can talk to uh, one of the specialists. They will be working pretty much 24 seven. I mean, these guys are hard workers uh, and they're gonna be there whenever you need them. They can lock in your price of gold. You know, just make a phone call uh, and they'll help you select the type of gold to buy, the corns, the bars. And the one thing you know that they're never gonna do because I've never allowed this, even when I didn't own the company, when I had a consulting agreement with Gold Money, we never allowed our specialists to push people in to overpriced uh, numismatic uh, collectible type coins. We've never done that. I've never done that since I founded the company. In fact, the reason I founded the company back you know, when I did is because I used to just recommend that people buy gold and I didn't have my own gold company. So I just said, find a reputable dealer and buy some gold. Well, then I started hearing a lot of horror stories about people being bait and switched into these overpriced coins, which a lot of uh, coin companies were selling because it was very lucrative. The, the markups were outrageous. So it was great 
for the companies and the salesmen, but it was a lousy deal uh, for the customers. And a lot of these customers were buying gold because of me. And so I ended up setting up my own gold company. So I knew I had a place to refer people where I knew they weren't going to get ripped off. And if you're not familiar with a lot of these tactics, I have a webpage, goldscams.com, and you can get these classic scams that are still being used today to try to push people into these overpriced products. That's not going to happen at Shift Gold. You're always going to get uh, the highest quality uh, coins and bars at the lowest possible markup above their melt value. You want to invest in gold. You don't want to start a coin collection. I mean, if you want to collect coins, I mean, sure, that's fine. You can collect stamps or Chinese ceramics or art, but don't confuse collecting uh, with owning gold as money and as a store of value and a hedge against inflation. Anyway, that's it. Uh, bye for now. And I'm looking forward to continuing to work uh, with all the Shift Gold customers uh, now that it's back in the family. Take care.